and the whole thing had been choreographed with the hidden cameras and such that that I wouldn't be able to catch the little. But I, <laughs> I caught him. <laughs> I started just pummeling. <laughs> And then he looks up and he's like a little boy. <laughs> Donald Faison, star of the movie Skyline, thought it would be awesome to prank his Scrubs co-star Zach Braff by having a group of kids pretend to destroy Braff's brand new Porsche. This went exactly as well as you might expect. I watched you, you little I didn't I saw it. you with this can in your hand, you little Faison and the punked crew set the prank up so that upon exiting a liquor store, Braff would spot a group of toothpick-chewing adolescents spray-painting his $100,000 automobile. The kids were supposed to escape while Braff stood there dumbfounded, but the Garden State goofus apparently became possessed by some long-dead Mesopotamian war god and chased one of them down, beating the 12-year-old actor mercilessly like a drunken stepfather in an after-school special, which is the worst thing Zach Braff has ever done, but probably the 7,000 1465th worst thing that somebody wearing a Yankees hat has done. Needless to say, MTV had to edit around the beating before airing the hilarious prank because a man violently assaulting a child isn't the kind of programming your advertisers generally love pairing with Viagra commercials. Of course, they edited that, that whole bit out because they don't really want you beating up children. But at least these were just sort of one-off crazy events, unlike everything Mel Gibson does because apparently Mel Gibson is a god prank-obsessed lunatic. Now he He's currently best known as an aging racist lunatic who occasionally shows up in direct-to-DVD movies, but at one point, Mel Gibson was one of the biggest stars in the world. Uh, see, basically, I'm um, a movie star. Everyone wanted to work with him, and he had a reputation for being an incorrigible prankster, which is a term here meaning burgeoning serial killer. The majority of his pranks were singularly focused on humiliating his female co-stars in ways that would be considered felonies if they were committed by even a slightly less famous maniac. While filming Forever Young with Jamie Lee Curtis, Mel pretended to be a knife-wielding lunatic and showed up at her trailer in a hockey mask, a prank which was presumably doubly insulting because Michael Myers, the killer who chased Curtis through Halloween, wears a William Shatner mask. Hockey mask is Friday the 13th. Wrong movie. It is unclear whether this mistake was intentional because, you know, Mel Gibson is a crazy asshole. Later, Mel Gibson gifted a freeze-dried rat to his co-star, Helen Hunt, on the set of What Women Want because Mel Gibson does not know the answer to that question. He also took his stalker gag a step further. Rather than simply showing up at someone's trailer with a mask and a knife, he created a fake report about a knife-wielding lunatic running around the studio and even had memos printed up and posted in the security office and around the Paramount lot. Only then did he put on his maniac costume to deliver the punchline to his hilarious joke, which was to whimsically attack the film's director, Nancy Myers, in her office. Myers screamed and began stabbing him with a pencil because she thought she was about to be murdered, which means Mel Gibson's clever joke was a rousing success. He climbed on top of the makeup trailer and, in his own words, began laughing like a hyena in celebration of his wit because holy sh**, Mel Gibson is a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you think I'm crazy? While filming Ransom, Gibson tracked down some nude photos that Rene Rousseau, who had the somber misfortune of playing Mel's wife in the film, had taken back when she was a teenager. That last word is incredibly important. When Mel got hold of the photos, he had portions of them enlarged to poster size, then presumably also had them laminated to defend against his manic slobber. Yeah, yeah. rocket in his yeah. pocket. Yeah, he's that kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we hired him. He then posted them, a single image at a time, on the crew bulletin board. So every day, the cast and crew of Ransom were treated to a different part of 17-year-old Rene Rousseau's anatomy. According to her, he put bits and pieces of it, a breast, a finger, a knee, and he put them on the bulletin board every day. You may recognize this as something a serial killer would do, but Julia Roberts, who got off relatively easy with just a freeze-dried rat delivered to her trailer, affectionately refers to Gibson as the only thing on Earth that makes her paranoid. And you know what lit Mel, uh, Mel's pants on fire? Well, uh, it or, hit me too, but I'm really? not a big, you know, baby about it. <laughs> I don't have to show my wounds. Makes sense. 